different technique when they fish because I've been doing these seminars for 20, 30 years and there's no wrong way of fishing. Every one of these guys could fish this drop shot in a different way and catch fish, all right? So let me show you uh, another method. So let's say that you have uh, arthritis in your hands really bad, all right? or your eyesight's bad, and you can't tie a polymer knot. Now, there's gonna be a lot of you on the show that say, well, how else can that be? Everybody knows how to tie a polymer knot. No, they don't. They don't know how to tie a polymer knot, and they can't tie a polymer knot. You might be 85 years old. I know a lot of guys that are 85 years old. They can hardly see, you know. Um, I've had them on the back of my boat before. Let me cut this off and show you another brand new way to fish where you don't have to tie a knot. No knots at all. All right, so we ready for this? We're gonna break off this sinker. Whoops, that didn't last long. We're going to take off this worm and we're gonna cut this, we're gonna cut the hook off. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna start brand new. So we're gonna get another sinker off. Bass Pro Shop sinkers. These sinkers are identical to every one you buy anywhere else, okay? So they're the same exact sinkers. We're gonna get a brand new fresh hook. Remember what I told you about bending that hook, you know? I don't know if you can see, camera can see that good, but see how straight that end of that hook is, how it lines up with the shaft? I'm gonna bend that three degrees to the left. So I'm gonna take this, hold the bottom like this, and just bend it. Now you're gonna see that how crooked that hook is. That helps me catch more fish by bending that hook. Just that one simple thing. Do you guys see how that's bent? See how I put a three degree bend in that? that? That gives you that little bit more edge. When that fish bites, that hook actually is not even with the shaft of this, and you actually get a better hook set. You can up, you can up your hook sets probably about 15% just by that little bend, just that little secret. A lot of pros won't share these with you, but being at the Bass Pro Shop, we always share all our secrets. And we have, you guys know, all know about the Bass Pro Shop seminars we have. Every second Tuesday of every month up in the Fine Gun Room at 6.30. So if we have a lot of different pros come here. Those seminars are free. You can bring your wife, your kids, your grandma, anybody, fiance, so they're all free. So let's teach you a different way to do this. All right, so we gotta hook that now. I told you about the bobber stoppers. I'm gonna show you how to rig these and probably one of the most asked questions. Now these are from the Bass Pro Shop. You get three of these rings. You know, they're very, very powerful. So I'm gonna, I mean the popular, well, I'm gonna show you some different ways that we can use this little thing right here to increase your fishing. So the first thing I need to do is put a bobber stopper on, all right? The people that use these actually did this for uh, crappie fishing. So. We're gonna actually take, and we're going to, all right, these bobber stoppers have a little loop on the end of the, on the little end of the, the line here. It's just a little loop, and that loop is what I'm going to stick this line through. So I'm gonna stick my line right through that little loop, and I know you can see that it's caught on there, so it's, it's on there right now, all right? These are, people are always asking, how do you get that bobber stopper on your line? I'm gonna stick it through two inches, grab the bobber stopper, hold on to the ring, and I'm gonna pull that. It just pulled off. Now there's the bobber stopper on, on the string. Bass Pro has different, these bobber stoppers fit different size line. So this bobber stopper fits, you know, 10, 12, 14 pound test line. Well, I'm using eight pound test. So first you put on one, one bobber stopper, and I'm going to take that bobber stopper and I'm gonna move it up about 12 inches. Then I'm gonna take my new hook 
the one I, the one I just bent. Remember what I told you about the hook needs to be pointing up? So this hook needs to be pointing up like this, like this, not like this. Remember, we're talking about catching the fish on the top of the roof of the mouth. So that needs to be pointing upwards. So I'm gonna thread that on the line. All right. So I've threaded that on the line with the hook up. So I'm gonna slide that down. Now that's on the bopper stopper. You see how that's pointing up? So now that I got that hook on there, and that's gonna be the top of the hook set. So now I'm gonna have to put more bobber stoppers on there. All right, so I'm just gonna, it's so easy to use these, and they come in red, yellow, and black. So I'm just gonna use red. Red is always a good color. So I'm gonna put it through the bobber stopper. I'm gonna grab the bobber stopper, pull. Wham, bam, there's one right there. Now this is kind of loose, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put another one on. So I'm gonna put two of them on the bottom. One on the top, two on the bottom. Since it was kind of loose, I'm gonna thread this back through. Boy. Okay, there I go. I'm gonna pull the bobber stopper on the string. Okay, we have three on there. One on the top, two on the bottom. So I'm gonna slide this back down like that. So I have two bobber stoppers. I have three bobber stoppers on there, two on the bottom, one on the top. And you're gonna probably be wondering why I did that. So let me finish this up and I'll explain this to you why. Okay, and it's pointing up. So I'm going to do the most critical part of this operation. The most critical thing I could teach you on this trick is to take a knife, put it in the clasp, in the middle and round this out so that it's round because we're gonna tie this on. So we have the hook on there. Now we're going to, now we're gonna tie this on. I'm gonna tie three overhand knots, that's all. Three overhand knots. There's one, here's two. I'm gonna wet it just a little bit and do number three. Now, do you know why I, I opened up that clasp and I tied that, uh, tied three overhand knots in there? It's because when that bass bites, bites this worm, let me show you what it's gonna do. I'm gonna rig it Texas style just like I did the other ones. So you've got a bite now, all right? Here comes your fish. He bit it, you set the hook, wham, bam. Guess where it goes? It goes right down onto the lead. Now, you're fighting that fish on the bottom of that lead, and if you don't have this tied on, guess what, it's gonna break it off. When I first taught this about, I've had this invention for probably four years now, when I first taught this, I haven't really taught it that much anymore, but when I first taught this, one of the main things everybody was doing was coming back in and saying, guy, I got a three pounder on. And I was reeling that up and all of a sudden it came down on the piece of lead and it just came off. And I go, did you open, did you open the lead up, the clasp up and tie it over three? Well, no, I didn't do that. I didn't remember to do that. You've got to open that clasp up and you've got to tie that on three times. But you do have to open that little clasp up that goes on the uh, drop shot weight. Now, the best part about this is you don't have to tie any knots. If you have arthritis or you have a deficiency of seeing it or, or anything, or you just don't want to tie a knot, you know, a polymer knot, or don't want to learn, once you have your, unhook your fish, you can take all three of those and set that right where you want to go. Maybe that, maybe that length is not working for you. Maybe it's nighttime. Well, guess what? At nighttime, the fish, some of the fish will chase shad, but most all the fish are eating crawdads at night. So what I do at night is I drop this down to where the worm is touching the bottom of the sinker, 
and there's only like three or four inches long, all right? So I can take this and I can adjust this. What if I'm not catching any fish that way? What if I want to do a, what if I want to do 18 inches and try it, you know? Here's the weight down here. What if I want to do that, you know? Then I can do that. I can move this without having to tie, break that off and retie it, all right? You see how easy that is? Go down, you can move it down, you can move it up, and you have no, and what's, and what is the secret behind this? Tie in the lead. Opening the lead up with a knife, make sure you, you open that up and you, I forgot to cut the tag end off. That's the whole secret to this method is tying that on, all right? Anybody else have any questions about this? Can you think of any? I pretty well covered it pretty tight. Okay. Uh, what do you prefer, what, like the weight of that? Oh, that's a good question. I, I told you I fished with a 3 16 and he's kind of basically asking, well, well what, is, what is the normal weight you use, you know? Some people like using a uh, quarter ounce because they'd rather fill the bottom all the time, but they're going to get hung up more. The heavier the weight you have that you're fishing with, the more you're gonna get stuck, the more you're gonna break these off, and the more you're gonna buy, all right? I have one friend I fish with. It doesn't matter which depth he fishes at, he only uses one eighth of an ounce. That's pretty light, one eighth. But he very rarely gets stuck and he catches as many fish as I do. I like using 3 16 3 16 is kind of the happy medium. And I lose, I lose weights too, so you know, I don't, you know. But if I'm fishing very, very shallow and it's nighttime and the fish have moved up to four or five feet of water, I'm gonna use a 1 8 ounce. But if I'm fishing deeper, I'll go anywhere from five to 25, 30 feet with this sinker. Because I'm using an eight pound test line and I'm using a very, very limber rod. I mean, this thing is limber. It's got a very, very fast tip. So as I'm bouncing that along the bottom, I can feel all them rocks and trees and limbs and stuff like that. Anybody else have any questions? I pretty well covered most of it, so I didn't leave you with a lot of, a lot of questions to ask and stuff like that. So remember, with this method, with bobber stubbers, you can go down or you can go up. Okay, so we did ask the question, we had a, a guy ask the question about braid. Excellent question. Braid is very, very, very sensitive. It's hard to break because you're fishing it with like 30 pound test. But let me go one step further, just one. All right, I'm using 25 pound braid, all right? And it's, and it's XPS, Bass Pro Shop braid, okay? So I'm using that and I'm going one step further, all right? There's the braid, there's the line. Now I've been fishing at Bartlett with this, so Bartlett's kind of dirty right now, so I'm getting away with 10 pound test. If you go to Lake Pleasant and you can look down 15, 20, 25 feet, you want to be using something a lot lighter, right? You want to be using like six pound uh, monofilament. You can use the same braid because you're tipping this with a, a monofilament. So let me go one step forward, all right? To tie this braid to this monofilament, there's two ways you can do this. You can tie this line to this braid by using an Alberto knot. And you're probably, I could ask any one of these guys, except the new guy, I could ask them, what, what, what kind of knot do you tie? So let's start with Bob. What do you tie, Bob? To the uh, Alberto? Okay. Alberto. Alberto. Skip. No clue. no clue. And the other Bob. What? You do the Alberto, all three of you? None of you, none of you guys use the blood knot? You uh, used to use blood knot, didn't you? Okay. Well, there's another tie that's called the blood knot, you know. Now, these knots are not the easiest thing to tie, okay? So. The easiest thing for me to say is to tie. See that swivel right there? I tie 
a polymer knot to one end of the swivel, and then I go through the bottom end twice and tie three overhand knots or a fisherman's knot, and I leave about three feet of line. So when I break off, I'm not sitting, I'm, I'm not a real good, not, I'll be the first to admit I'm not a real good knot tire of sitting in the boat. If there's a quick bite and you're on a bite and those fish are biting real good, I'll throw a swivel on there and I'll put three feet of line and then that way I can just tie that right onto there. Usually I break the, the line off. The, the braid is real strong, it's 30 pound test. I'll break this line off and all I gotta do is get another section of two and a half, three feet, tie it on there, either do my barber stopper drop shot method or just tie a polymer knot in a sinker and I'm done. So that makes it pretty easy. That was an excellent question about the braid. Yeah. So it always depends, guys, on how clear the water is to the heavy amount of monofilament you want to use at a lake, all right? So I, I would not recommend tying, you know, a uh, line straight to the braid because on all our lakes, the fish can see it. Now this is more of a whitish, a whitish color. Actually, on the reel you can see it's a white color. See how white it is, you know? They make these braids in white, yellow, black, green, but a lot of guys like using colored braid, and every one of these guys will probably, they might use a different kind of braid. What color do you use, Bob? Uh, white or White or green, yellow? Green. Or, yeah, see this is a bright yellow, and this is a white. It does not matter what you use, what color you use. This is Nanofill, and these are in, uh, no, this is gonna be XPS. Sorry about that. I do have Nanofill, but this is an XPS. It's called a Hyperbraid. XPS Bass Pro makes this, and they're all good. All these braids are good, you know. Just depends on what you wanna, what you wanna use, you know. So I just, and somebody says, well, if you have a swivel on there, you know, you just can't, you just can't reel the swivel, because I'm using a little bit bigger swivel, and it won't go through the eyelet, all right? So I know to stop, because what I do is I pitch this bait. So I grab this with one hand, open the bail, and I'm holding the other one. I let that drop, and I let go of my finger, and that thing goes out about 20 feet. You'll never get tangled in this spool if you use braid. It will not tangle up at all. And you can cast probably five times further, right guys, with braid? Wouldn't you say no tangles in the, in the line and you can just barely flick it like this with your wrist? Everything is in your wrist now if you're fishing, everything. And you can, you can cast that out. And there's no memory in the line either. And there's no, yeah, another good one. There's no memory in this braid at all, none. So I would tell you if you're having problems with monofilament, and it's tangling all up. Boy, I'll tell you, go to a braid and then just do a swivel and tie on your little leader or you can tie on a blood knot or an Alberto knot. Hey, I just wanna say thank you for watching Fishing with Gary Simpf live at the Bass Pro Shop.